if the Republican presidential race was Jaws, then Rudolph Giuliani would be the shark. Trust me, I'm going somewhere with this. Probably not where you think I'm going either. In our fourth story tonight, Giuliani's strategy has been to lie in wait in Florida, then shoot from victory there on the 29th towards a big day on Super Tuesday. But the polls show Giuliani's lead in Florida fading away, a trend likely to continue as his rivals now turn their focus on that state. And Giuliani's prospects for Super Tuesday are in ever more doubt as two new polls show him trailing John McCain in one key state voting that day, a state Giuliani's campaign once considered a sure thing, his home state, New York. The WNBC Marist poll putting McCain on top with 34% of likely GOP primary voters there. Giuliani tied with Willard Mitt Romney at 19. The Keith number is 12 and a half here. Siena College's poll shows a massive flip. McCain rocketing from 15 to 36 percent. Giuliani tanking from 48 to 24. And the Keith number, though, on that one is extraordinarily high at nearly a quarter. So while staying off stage at the heart of things helped boost the shark's impact in Jaws, Mr. Giuliani might do well to remember that in real life they kept the shark off camera, mostly because the shark machinery didn't work too well. The first time they put the damn thing in the water, it sank right, right to the bottom. On that note, we'll bring in MSNBC's David Schuster, who covers politics for Hardball, and sometimes here on Countdown as well. It's good to see you here. Sir. Good evening, Keith. Uh, what's happening in New York to Rudy Giuliani? Well, New Yorkers uh, don't like losers. I mean, whether it's sports or politicians, and you look at what Rudy Giuliani has done, sixth place in Iowa, fourth place in New Hampshire, sixth place in Michigan, sixth in South, South Carolina, sixth in Nevada, and oh, by the way, in Michigan, he was only 6,000 votes ahead, for, ahead of uncommitted. And, and, and we're not talking about Giuliani having spent all his time in Florida. I mean, he spent, he went, made over 100 visits to New Hampshire. He spent over $2.5 million and still a sort of measly fourth place. I mean, it's, it's embarrassing. And he today explained the falling polls, particularly in Florida, on the fact that he now has competition. Now, was this a surprise to him? Is there a certain naivete that we've seen sort of pop up at unfortunate moments in this campaign? Julian is in serious trouble because um, the competition is that he hasn't been on any of the front pages of the newspapers for the last four or five weeks. He has had Florida essentially to himself as far as the local media. He's been there for a couple of weeks. He's had the local stations. And yet, despite having Florida somewhat to himself, the national media coverage of McCain and Romney and Huckabee has been enough to sort of push Giuliani down. And Giuliani's now going into this race in Florida when everyone else is in the state, and he's just sort of hanging in there. It's a huge problem. And the day that it, essentially it begins for all the Republicans in Florida, he trots out Johnny Damon of the New York Yankees. Now, I know Johnny Damon for a long time. He's a lovely guy. He really is. I, I don't care anything one jot about his politics. He's just a good guy. But the quote from, from Johnny today was, and by, uh, John, right, right now Johnny is only 50% of New York Yankees center fielders. So he, only doesn't have, he doesn't even have that vote locked down, just Giuliani. But here's this quote. Rudy comes and visits me at the ballpark quite a bit, so I figure I could drive down the street and visit him here at the, at the place where the endorsement was made in Florida. Why would you have him say anything about... Giuliani going to Yankee games, considering the, that appalling statistic that came out after some of the boasts about 9-11 and how much time he spent at Ground Zero, and the calculation was made that Giuliani had spent more time watching the Yankees in the two months after 9-11 than he had at, the, at, at Ground Zero. Yeah, you get, the, you get the sense that things are going so badly for the Giuliani campaign that maybe he asked, I don't know, Mel Hall to come out and endorse him, and, and somehow he wasn't available because of his legal troubles. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, yeah, Johnny Damon's sort of a popular figure and likable guy, as you point out. But on the other hand, when Giuliani does talk about sort of baseball, I think it sort of takes him away from message. I mean, Johnny Damon, while he's a great guy, he's not exactly known for his astute political analysis. Nobody's going to say, oh, you know, Johnny Damon's got that right position on Giuliani's tax cuts. It doesn't, it doesn't fit. Or it's not, it's not the big man. I mean, you would, you would not want Roger Clemens' endorsement right now, but you need a name. You need, a, you need somebody to go, oh, yeah, I know who he is. And, and a lot of baseball people don't really know who Johnny Damon is. All right, I, I'll stop with this. This is just the merger of my two things. <laughs> John McCain, the other Johnny, did he just get a nice little gift from Mike Huckabee because Chuck Norris says McCain would be too old and probably wouldn't survive the presidency, which is just a, a ghoulish thing to say. But on top of that, Chuck Norris, who once played a Vietnam POW in a movie, is ripping on an actual Vietnam POW. And Chuck Norris is talking about age. He's three and a half years younger than John <laughs> McCain. What is what, what kind of a... Who, again, naivete in a campaign, you have somebody else speaking for you, this is the danger of the celebrity endorsement, right? The guy may say something incredibly stupid. Well, and it's not just the only thing that uh, Chuck Norris has said. Chuck Norris said that he was going to raise $10 million at this incredible <coughs> fundraiser barbecue that they had at the Norris Ranch in Texas, and I think they raised maybe a million, maybe. I mean, it underscores how quirky the Huckabee campaign has been. Sure, Chuck Norris gets some of the younger folks in there because they want to they meet Chuck Norris or Rick, Rick Flair, whoever it is. But... 
the problem is that when you have Chuck Norris then saying sort of these strange things about John McCain's age, and again, it takes Huckabee away from message because now the question is, well, what's Mike Huckabee's reaction been to it? And there's Huckabee having to sort of backpedal and say, well, look, I, I don't agree with my friend Chuck Norris, even though Chuck Norris has been with me every right. step of the way. I have him the stand next weeks. to me at the, uh, <laughs> on the platforms after each of the primaries. Um, last thing, has anybody yet figured out what Fred Thompson's speech was about Saturday night? Uh, nobody's figured it out, and uh, even his staff uh, still has no idea. Right. <laughs> Our own David Schuster uh, in, in the flesh. Thank you, David. Thanks, Keith.